Broadcasting from the basement of La Penta, this is WICR. Hello everyone, welcome to a New York Sports Gridiron Recap. I'm your host with the most, Jersey Joe Archino, here with the man, the myth, the legend, Antonio Coppola, who's endured immense hardships getting here to this day. <laughs> But Antonio, we are here, as is the start of the NFL season. Last night, the New England Patriots defeating the Pittsburgh Steelers 28-21. to Antonio, let me ask you, I think there's a lot of things you could take away from the opening game. For you, what was the biggest thing? For me, uh, well, Joe, first of all, it's hard to ignore the response Tom Brady got from the crowd and, and yeah. the way he played on the field after everything that's that's happened through this offseason. Did you expect that from him? Because I really thought he was just going to come out with like a man possessed because uh, there's so much fuel on that fire right now. Yeah, um, I get, it's hard not to expect things like that kind of performance from Tom Brady. Uh, obviously coming off the Super Bowl championship, that place was fired up and then, you know, com- uh, Add on the fact of, of the whole Deflategate scandal, uh, the f- the fact that he was pretty much exonerated and uh, his 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 uh, suspension got rescinded. Those fans were fired up. He was fired up. You saw it when he came out of the tunnel, and uh, he he really put it all out there on the field. There's no doubt about it, and I, I think for me that the biggest negative I could say from the Patriots that I think we all kind of anticipated is I think their secondary is going to get shredded this year. Mm-hmm. Obviously losing Brown or losing Revis is huge. Those I mean I think that's the thing that kept them from winning the Super Bowl for that little stretch is because they just weren't good enough in that secondary. You saw how bad I think the year that they lost to the Giants in 2012, they were like one of the, the they might have been the 31st or 32nd ranked defense. Um, and that just wasn't going to cut it. But now it seems like they're kind of back to that. Obviously, they couldn't hold on to Browner and Revis. Um, and, and it looks, I think they'll get shredded. But I think offensively, of course, they didn't skip a beat. And coming out of the gate, looking as sharp and quick as they did, I don't know. It looked a little bit scary. If I'm the rest of the AFC East right now, it looked a little bit scary. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get to the rest of the AFC East in a minute. We got to talk about the Jets, but an- another big uh, piece that the Patriots were missing is Vince Wolfork, and you saw that yes. you saw that among uh, with their defensive line, D'Angelo Williams, who you know he's a 32 year old back. He he's had a lot of mileage put on him in in Carolina. Uh, he shredded he shredded that Patriots defense last night. There was gaping holes all over the place, outside inside. He ran for 127 yards. I didn't think many people saw that coming from him uh, as he's filling in for Le'Veon Bell. Uh, as he's suspended for a couple games, but yeah, the secondary is is going to be the biggest question mark for the Patriots. Obviously, they're they're going to try and uh, repeat. We'll see. We'll see uh, what happens. I think the AFC the AFC in general is wide open. It is. It's funny. I did a show yesterday. I uh, just I w- came in, opened up the station. I did a show, and I just really. Overall, I felt like the last two years I could come into the station and just say without a doubt who I thought was going to be my Super Bowl pick, who I really felt good about. But this year, it's just I have no idea still. I I can't sit here and tell you that I have a clear-cut favorite or a gut feeling. I think this is as open a season as there's been in a long time. And, And that's what the NFL is. The NFL, the idea that everybody likes to sell us on is the parody. And I think... If you really need an example, it's this season because I think all the top teams, I think the Patriots, the the Packers, the Colts, all of these teams have holes and reasonably doubt why they can't win it all or Mm -hmm. can win it all. You know, Joe, I gave it a little thought last night. I really think that Andrew Luck and the Indianapolis Colts are going to go to the Super Bowl. Something just tells me. I know that they have that big question on defense. And I know I'm I'm going on a total tangent right now, off topic, but something just tells me that he's going to get it done. You, you heard all the reports of, of Chuck Pagano not getting his extension. He's in a make or break year. Yep. Andrew Luck. He's I I believe you would know because you know you you followed him since he was in college at Stanford. He he's still on his rookie contract, correct? Yes, he uh he's playing he's for, like the last one to get right. Get the he needs deal. to get paid. Yeah, RG three got paid, and look at what's happened to him. So, I really think that this is going to be a big year for the Colts uh, on the field and within you know management, front office, whatever you want to call it. But I really do think that they're going to have a great year. Uh, they added Andre Johnson on offense, and I know I'm going on a complete you know tangent right now. Hey, we're, look, we're <laughs> Andrew Luck talk is always okay with me. All so right? I was just I, yeah, I was just thinking about it last night before the game started. I was thinking, you know, who in the AFC is really going to compete for a title? 
Well, here, Obviously, New Colts. England. I think Go the Colts have this going for them. The, the, their division is very weak. Uh, Houston is will be competitive, but I don't think that they run a real risk. Jacksonville is obviously Jacksonville. And Tennessee, I think it's going to take Marcus Mariota's time to figure mm-hmm. things out. So they should have a relatively easy path getting to in, and stack up some pretty easy wins against the division. The only doubt I have is about them getting stops defensively. I have no worry ever about Andrew Luck right. and what Andrew Luck can do. Andrew Luck has made T.Y. Hillen into what he is. He has made uh, Dwayne Allen into what he is. You, He could make anything work. It's the defensive side, and we've seen when they played New England the last two times, New England just went up and down the field at mercy, and they couldn't mm-hmm. stop them for a lick. That's my only doubt is I don't know if the, the talent – around luck is enough but is can luck is luck capable of doing it there's no question i think he's one of the most talented supreme uh just once in a generation players we're gonna see for a very long time i agree and you know you mentioned defense that's kind of been there even when peyton manning was there that was always always their their biggest weak spot their biggest uh the, the biggest, uh, I guess, lack of, or hole, that was the biggest hole is the defense. They always had, you know, a Dwight Freeney. They had, you know, some older linebackers and Gary Brackett. They had Bob Sanders and players like that, Antoine Bethea. But I think now with Andrew Luck, the biggest thing is is scoring, obviously. Uh, he's got, the, like I said, that weapon in Andre Johnson. T.Y. Helton's come into his own. He's grown a lot as a player over the past couple of years yeah uh, obviously they lose reggie wayne that's a that's a, a hit in the locker room in terms of leadership but uh it's definitely all about the defense and you mentioned that division which is very weak uh you've got a rookie quarterback in mariota brian hoyer with the texans and then jacksonville's jacksonville so i do expect them to pile up wins i i see them getting back uh to the afc championship game and then you know the rest goes from there it's a toss-up well, let's go to the i mean we'll get to the jets but just if there's another team in the AFC right now that you think really is going to challenge them, I mean, obviously, you, would you put the Patriots right there still? To, to challenge Indianapolis? For the, in the AFC Championship. Let's say you had to make the pick today. <sighs> AFC Championship game. Based on last night, if you asked me before last night's game, I would go Pittsburgh. Based on last night's game, I'm more 50-50 just because of how the Patriots okay. played. Um, I, I, like what, I really like what Pittsburgh did, but after last night, Joe, that defense needs a lot of work. They, a lot. I mean, look, the fact that, that Rob Ron Gronkowski got free as mm-hmm. much as he did and he had a linebacker covering him and that's it, if that's your defensive scheme to stop Rob Gronkowski, you're going to have trouble stopping a lot of good players in this league. Uh, that was just... I thought a lot of just sloppy mistakes and a lot of just dumb, dumb plays, schemes from the Steelers last night. Uh, but now we go to your Jets. Let's do a it. A lot of new faces, a big overhaul. I'm expecting a big season from them. I, I, I think obviously you're starting the, the year on the right foot, but you're our Jets extraordinaire. I want you to address the nation. Address the nation. Okay. I guess we got to start with the quarterback position because that's what everyone has been talking yes. about lately. Obviously, Geno Smith is out. Do I want him back? Do, does Jets? Do the Jets fans want him back? And I think it's a toss-up. You ask. You'll ask. Someone, I really do. I think it's fifth as flip fifty fifty as you could possibly get. Joe, I I like Ryan Fitzpatrick, but I don't love him, and that's the thing. He's, no, I think that's he's a, good a journeyman point. quarterback. Last year, he threw five touchdowns in, in a game for, in Houston. 500 yards, five touchdowns, and the game after that, he threw two pick sixes in the fourth quarter and lost a game for them. That's the kind of that's the type of quarterback he is. And for everyone out there saying Geno Smith is turnover prone, so is Ryan Fitzpatrick. So I think in the end, when Geno comes back, luckily for the Jets, they have a they have a week uh, five bye, so that's very early on. They play their four games. The fourth game is in London, so that's why they get the bye uh, week five. They're gonna come back, and I think. That's a perfect time to install Geno Smith into the offense and let him be the starter of this team and just go from there. And if it doesn't work out, start over next year. Because with the acquisition of Brandon Marshall, from everything I heard and read over throughout the offseason, him and Geno were building a great chemistry together. And it's not only about Marshall and Geno, it's about the rest of the offense. You looked at you look at Eric Decker, who last year was the number one receiver for the Jets, kind of playing out of position. No one really he wasn't really, you know, known as a number one receiver. He always had Demarius Thomas next to him, a bigger name. So now he gets to come and play his natural position as a quote-unquote number two. They get Devin Smith in the draft uh, from Ohio State. He's injured right now. He's he's expected back in a couple weeks. 
And you look right there, the Jets already have th uh, three weapons that they haven't had. Not only that, the three weapons that they haven't had in years. So I think for Geno, the biggest thing is that he has weapons, that he has options, and he's no longer throwing the ball to Clyde Gates and, you know, David Clowney and no names that come up from the practice squad. I think everything you said is very legitimate. And the only question, I think the Jets, I agree, I think the Jets are in a good shape this year. I think they're really poised for a good year. I mean, you just look at the things that they did to correct the biggest issues that they had, mm -hmm. especially in that secondary. Obviously, quarterback is the difficult one, but Fitzpatrick, is he a journeyman? Yes. But has he had stretches where he's put together pretty good play? I would say he has. Um, and I, I have I have some a degree of faith. The only thing that worries me is I think you look around that AFC East, and I think everybody except the Patriots have gotten better. Obviously, Buffalo is better, except that quarterback, they're still very uncertain with Tyra Taylor. Miami is probably the team that we've made one of the biggest splashes this offseason with their draft picks, with bringing in Ndamukong Sue. Um, and the Patriots, obviously, they lose some key players, but at the same time, you never, ever count them out. Right. So that's the only thing that I worry about with the Jets is how competitive that division is going to be very competitive this year. It is, uh, and luckily for the Jets, looking at the schedule, it's not too tough. I mean, you've got teams on there like the Raiders, uh, the Texans we mentioned before, who are kind of, you know, a big question mark. Um, they play the Titans. They play that whole division, as a matter of fact, the AFC South. So they got Jacksonville on the schedule. Um, they've got Cleveland Week 1 coming up uh, in a couple days this Sunday to open out their season. So I think it's 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 imperative for the Jets to come out and, and make a splash Score a lot of points, score as much as you can, and and you know start off the season right. And like you said, in the off season they corrected a lot. Joe, last year that secondary was oh, you couldn't watch unwatchable. it. Unwatchable. You could not watch it. The guys on the practice squad, or the guys on the practice squad that came up in the sec to start for our secondary last year for the Jets secondary, were now playing. They were playing in the fourth season, uh, in jeez, the uh, the fourth preseason game uh, this past week as the third string so that just shows you and that's also a good thing because now for them to go back as depth you know you sign Cromartie you sign Revis you sign Buster Screen all the guys that started last year are now your depth they're now your second stringers and that's great because they got those you know they were playing 14 15 16 games last year great amount of experience so I think the depth for the Jets is another huge thing to point out that can really help them this year Absolutely. Well, we're about at that 13-minute mark. Don't want to hit that 13 number. Antonio, you've had enough of a rough day with everything <laughs> else today. So we're going to take a quick break, come back. I don't know. We're coming back with Calcio Corner, maybe more football. You never know, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 